Oh, hey, Willow. What's up? Hi. Oh, hi, Dr. John. What's up? How's it going? Uh, okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How can I help? Okay. So I'm really nervous. Um, uh, it's all good. All right. So I have had um, this overwhelming feeling of loneliness for as long as I can remember. Um, I'm 36 years old now. Um, I don't have any friends. I don't have like close family. Um, and I'm not in a romantic relationship right now. Um, I have a bad habit of convincing myself or if someone wants to be my friend or whatever, um, of telling myself that, eh, that, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not worth it, that I'm not, that I'm lying to them, that, that I'm not what they think they are. They think I am. And, uh, um, whose words originally, who gave you those words originally that you've co-opted into your own voice? A lot of people. Name them. Let's, let's, let's hear some of them. Um, my mom, okay. my stepdad, my brothers and sisters. What'd your brothers uh, and sisters say? Oh, uh, well, just, you know, growing up, they, I wasn't really the most liked kid in the family, I guess. I don't. I know, but where does that story come from? Did they tell you, like, we don't like you, go away? Yeah. Were you abused yeah. as a kid? Yeah. Okay. That's what I hear. I'm sorry, Willow. Uh, I'm so sorry. Don't be, you don't, you don't apologize to me for nothing. I would um, ask your permission if it was okay. And then the next probably 10 minutes, I would just like to give you a hug. <laughs> yeah. When's the, last, when's the last time somebody, you touched skin on skin with somebody else? Nine years. How long? Nine years. Oh, sweetheart. <sighs> I just want to know how I stop telling myself that. Well, number one, I want you to listen real carefully to me, okay? Mm-hmm. That story in your head is keeping you safe because the tiny little gang that you were given that was supposed to be your original ride or die, mom, dad, brothers and sisters, they hurt you real bad, right? Yeah. And you and I could sit down and you could tell me some stories that would make my skin crawl, wouldn't it? Okay, can't you? Crawl. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I know you could. And so your body telling you that story, that means your body's actually working amazing. Because it knows that people equal hurt. Especially loved ones who get close to you. And yeah. the problem is, it's it's kind of like if you were if you nearly drown as a kid, like in a pool, and then your body body developed a like an anxiety reaction to water and then you suddenly died of thirst over here. That's what's happening right now, right? Yeah. And so you have to teach your body, hey, I was not okay then, but I'm okay now. And I had to cut off human contact to stay safe and to stay alive. And now that very action is what's killing me as a grown up. Yeah, it is. But do you make, I, I want you to make peace with your body. Your body's not the problem. It's working. We just have to do some other things now. Okay. Do you believe me on that? I do, yes. Okay. So good for you. It's working. In fact, it's probably working too good. Nine years is too long to go between hugs. <laughs> that might even classify as torture in the Geneva Convention. I haven't looked at it in a while, but. 
<laughs> it's not good. Do you have a puppy? I do. I have two dogs. Okay. Is that good? They bring you some yeah. peace? Yes, they're my best friends. All right, don't say that because they're dogs, but, <laughs> but I do understand they are, they are what you got right now. Yeah. So I think this is probably self-evident, but I want to hear in your words, what is loneliness for nine years? Well, let me ask you this before I, I dig into that question. When's your last romantic, ooey gooey, gross relationship? Um, well, that's really complicated, but um, that was nine years ago was be at the end of it, that relationship. Were you married? Physical. No, no, but I was with him for uh, 18 years. Why didn't y'all ever get married? <laughs> I know. <laughs> mm. I know. I wanted to. Yeah. But. <laughs> and that was just another, um, because he was a fleeting jerk who hung around and used you for 18 years. That is yet another proof positive for that story and you, that you're not worth anything. You're like, yep, see? A guy yeah. who was with me for almost two decades wouldn't even marry me. Yeah, it's not true. It's not true. And I know I'm just some Yahoo podcaster and every bit of evidence you have is to the contrary to that, but I want you to hear my words. It's not true. Yeah, I believe you. I okay. do. Here's the unfortunate next step for you. Mm. You have to go be weird. <laughs> be weird? Yep. <laughs> Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, you have to go be weird. Okay. That means you got to go first. You have to invite people into your space where your body will scream and yell at you like it's on fire. But you know it's not. And you're going to have to risk asking a few coworkers, hey, you guys want to go get drinks? You guys want to go get chips and salsa? You guys want to come over for whatever's going on? I don't know what you're into, but if you're like Kelly, like the big NASCAR race or whatever is she's into these days. And here's the deal. They might say no. Yeah. And that will be because of their things going on, not yours. Yeah. Now your whole demeanor just changed. Your whole, ver like your whole cadence just changed. What scares you about going to be weird? Um, I, uh, just that rejection. Yep. You know? It will happen again. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, it's scary. It is. It's super scary. I have a friend um, named Carolyn Xavier. She's a comedian. Um, you can find her on Instagram. She's hilarious. Like, like, stop what I'm doing. Hilarious. <laughs> and, um, I met her in a comedy club. Um, I was watching a show and we met up there and I was with another comedian. We met there and I just cold invited her. We have, we have a group of randos that come over for Easter and for Thanksgiving to our house. People of all different, like it is straight, like, like it's all kind of people. <laughs> And I invited her to come. She said, can I bring my 14-year-old son? I was like, of course you can. Dude, Willow, she just showed up. I think she was going to come. And she's, um, she's heavily, heavily tattooed. She is a comedian. And she showed up to a stranger's house knowing there was going to be 30 other people there for Easter. Oh, wow. And dude, we had a blast. Oh. A blast. I invited the woman who does my tattoos and her family for Thanksgiving. They came. And her little <laughs> two-year-old, we had so much fun. They didn't know anybody. They didn't know anybody. Yeah. And could there be disasters? Yeah, we've had people come over and it's like, yeah, this will be the only time you ever come to my house. That's fine. Right? That happens. That happens. Yeah. But here's the thing. Can you agree with me that what you've been doing for nine years isn't working? Yeah. Okay. Let's try something different. Let's just try something different. Yeah. No, you're right. 
because you're living in a state of rejection, which sounds weird because you're the thing you're most scared of is being rejected. I also think it would be well worth your time to go see somebody there in Tampa and to do the trauma healing you need to do. How many people have you told out loud that you were abused growing up? Um, actually, a, f a few. I won't. I have. Okay. I've been in therapy um, ever since I was like twelve. Is the first time I went. Okay, that's a long, long time. Are you kind of done with therapy for a while? It's no. okay if you are. No. 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 I I haven't gone in a few years. So. Okay. So I want you to call somebody in town and here's what I want you to say. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for my body. I'm ready to t learn some things so I can teach my body that other people are not someone to be, or not something to be scared and afraid of. Yeah. And you're going to give your therapist some direction on things you want to work on. How do you do that? <laughs> what do you mean? How do you give them direction? Because that was my problem. We were never working on the things that I wanted to work on. And I didn't know how to say, like, I don't want to talk about that. I want to deal with this. Like, So that's a, that's, 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 I mean, at the end of the day, that comes down to, you don't even think the words that come out of your mouth have value. <sighs> you know what I mean? You're paying somebody else for their expertise and service. Yeah. And you think so little of you. That it's not even worth saying. It's like going to the doctor and not telling the doctor where it hurts. And so they just start giving you x-rays on your face, your ears, your foot. And you're like, no, it's my right butt cheek. It hurts. so Right? I mean, it, but they would, they would know. Yeah. Have you heard me talk about the fist in your chest exercise that my counselor gave me one time, my therapist gave me one time, was the worst? No. <sighs> I discovered there was a ticker tape underneath the movie of my life that just read, you suck, you suck, you're a piece of crap. And some people, uh, and I've, I've also found since then that I'm not near the only one. Many people have mm -hmm. that. Just that it just constantly running underneath the story of your life. Hey, I won this thing. Yeah, but you suck. Hey, I got this thing. Yeah, but it wasn't first place. Hey, it's got a promotion. But yeah, this other guy's going to get you other. Like it's, it never stopped. It never stopped. Yeah. And I know you have that too. I know that's why I'm telling you this. And my therapist asked me in session, say the words, put your hand in your chest and say the words, I love this guy, talking to myself. And I just started laughing. I, it, I'll cut to the chase. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I don't understand how I'm telling you because I realize how easy it is to say the words, I love this guy. I could not get those words to come out of my mouth. And I was a grown man with a exceptional salary and two healthy kids and a wife that likes me most of the time. I could not say those words. And my homework was to go home and look in the mirror and practice with my fist in my chest, looking myself in the eyes and saying the words over and over again, I love this guy. And what I realized was I was profoundly lonely too but I was expecting other people to give me something that I couldn't give myself. And that will never happen. Mm -hmm. You have to look at this not as a defect, but as something you have to practice. Yeah. You've spent your whole life driving in the desert and that's awesome, but you've never driven on ice. That doesn't mean you're an idiot or a moron or broken. You just have to learn how to drive on the ice. <laughs> right? Yeah. And that just means you're going to be a little bit, you're going to be not a little bit, a lot more graceful with Willow. That means, at, where do you work? Um, I work from home um, for a marketing company. Do you have an opportunity to go in? No. Okay. So before today is over, you're going to have looked for two or three local churches and you're going to make yourself go on Sunday. I don't care if you believe what they're saying from the pulpit or not, you're going to go be around people. Yeah. And if you get in the car, actually, if you shower, get dressed, get in the car, drive up, get out of the car, and then have a panic attack and get back in your car and go home, I'll count that as a win. I'll count that as a win. And then the next week, okay. you're going to go again, and this time you're going to just touch the door and get back to your car. 
I'm serious. Uh, no, I, I'm laughing because it's true. I know it is. I know it is. And you hear me say like I'm smiling. You're not broken. You just got to teach your body. Hey, your body has identified that there are wolves and tigers in that room, and there's not. There's a bunch of loving people. A few crazies, but mostly loving people. And I'm, 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 I'm just trying to think of hospitable gathering places. I want you yeah. to call a counselor for the day's over and not one um, on Zoom. I want you to go meet with somebody in person. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I want your body to begin to, f- you have, I want you to sit in a waiting room with people. I want you to fill out the form. I want you to sit across from s- another person and say, I'm not okay. And here's what I want to talk about. <laughs> and if yeah. you have to write it down, write it down. Okay. But before yeah, we do all this, here's your two homework assignments just for me. Okay? okay. Those are all for you. These are for me. Okay. When you get off this call, I want you to go into your bathroom. Don't say Candyman five times because I've seen that movie. It ends terribly. Okay? <laughs> but I no, want you to, no, thank you. I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to put your chest, your, your fist in your chest. Mm-hmm. And I want you to look yourself in the eye and say, I love this girl. I want you to say it 10 times all the way through. Mm-hmm. And about halfway through, I want you to drop your shoulders. And then I want you to go get something to write on, not with an app or something, but I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to write, here's what I'm worth. And I want you to make a list. I'm worth a hug. I'm worth people coming over to my house, even when it's messy, especially when it's messy. I'm worth going out to dinner with friends. I'm worth an intimate romantic relationship. It's just ugh to the outside world. Yeah, I can do that. I'm worth having best friends that I also don't have to pick their poop up when we walk. <laughs> right? <you know. laughs> Fair? Yeah. I can't tell you how grateful I am that you called today. Thank you. Like, um, like some of the things I've told you today, I need to go do again. And so I want to thank you for being a reminder for me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for helping me. If you'll come to Nashville, I would love to give you a big hug. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, would. I love that area. Well, come visit and the lobby's open. We got free cookies and do you'll get out. You'll get your brains hugged out here. Everyone hugs here. <laughs> And um, hang on the line. I'm going to send you a copy of Own Your Past, Change Your Future, and Building a Non-Anxious Life, both my books. I want you to read both of them back to back because they kind of work together like a puzzle piece. It's going to give you a roadmap. And by the way, this is going to be hard. You got a lot. You got a decade worth of teaching to, to, to recalibrate your body. And some old memories are going to come up and mom's going to call out of the blue and your brother's going to ask if you can come stay. Your, just weird stuff will happen as you get well. That's just part of it. And that's okay. Whew. You are worth being loved. You have value. God loves you. We here in in the Deloney gang, we love you. And now it's time for you to go do the work. Call anytime. 